Hi, my name is Rute and I'm a medical doctor. Welcome to Life as Dr. Rute. <music> Episode, we're talking about some of the things that can happen in relation to your periods that are signs that you need to speak to your doctor or your healthcare provider just to check things through. So these videos are not intended and should not substitute the role of your healthcare provider or your doctor. They're for educational purposes only. So the first thing that we're going to talk about in relation to your periods are painful periods. Us doctors call this dysmenorrhea. Now painful periods are very common and because they're very common, sometimes we can just say, well, you know what? It is what it is. I'm a woman. I'm just supposed to live with it. It's painful. Now, and the other thing about painful periods is that Pain is also very subjective. So how do you know when I should go and speak to my doctor about my painful periods? I should just suck it up because everybody else has pain? No. So the number one sign about your painful periods to talk to your doctor about is you. So if you feel that your periods are too painful, then that in itself is a sign enough to say, I need to talk to my doctor about it. Because what will happen is your doctor will be able to ask you questions and establish what could be causing you to have this pain and then looking at some of the treatment options that you can try. The other thing that's a sign in relation to painful periods is your periods are so painful you can't go to work. Every time it's your periods you're missing work, you're not, you, you plan your life around your periods, you can't go to school, you can't make a date to go you know, out and meet your friends or anything like that. That's a sign to say your periods are interfering with your quality of life and that should not be happening. So make an appointment to speak to your healthcare provider about it. There are many different reasons why you, we have pain when it comes to our periods. One is the, the uterus, the, the womb is contracting, so that can cause some discomfort and pain. But it shouldn't be so severe that it's causing, you know, it's interfering with your quality of life. And if that's happening, then it could be a sign of other things such as fibroids can cause a lot of pain. Um, other conditions like endometriosis or adenomyosis can cause painful periods. The second one, heavy bleeding. That's very similar to painful periods. How do I know that my periods are heavy? Everybody is different. Now, there's so many other ways of trying to establish whether your periods are heavy. Literally, when you look online, it might say, well, your periods, if you're bleeding about 30 mils on average, that's normal. And if it's more than 80 mils, then that's heavy. And you're just like, how am I supposed to calculate that? Unless you use a cup, it's really difficult to calculate. Now, the first thing I would say is if you feel like your periods are heavy, then that in itself is a sign to say, let me speak to somebody about it and let's establish what is causing these heavy periods and are they heavy? Other things are, it's similar to the pain as well. I, is the bleeding so heavy that it's affecting your quality of life? You're staying at home. You are not going out. You're not planning to go out you're just like no I'm just gonna stay indoors because I know I may soak through my clothes I'm just too embarrassed I'm scared or maybe you've had incidents happen you know you're flooding through your pads you're using you're using thick pads doubling up or maybe if you use tampons you're like if I use a tampon I have to put a pad on that in itself is a sign to say that your bleeding is heavy and you need to speak to your doctor about it so what they'll do is if you come to me with heavy bleeding, we'll try and establish how often are you changing your pants? Are you having large clots? What are the size of those clots? Because that can also determine how heavy, can tell me about how heavy your bleeding is. Because there are things that can cause heavy bleeding that may need to be dealt with. Things like fibroids is another example of heavy bleeding. Things like infections can cause heavy bleeding as well as sometimes some women are on contraception that causes them to bleed a lot heavier than usual. So at least myself as a doctor or somebody else as a healthcare provider can try and establish what is the cause of the heavy bleeding for you. All right, so those are the two first ones. So the next one is bleeding in between your periods. So if you have a period today 
and then you finish bleeding and you know you're expecting your next period at whatever time you're expecting it based on your cycle and in between you're bleeding that shouldn't be happening it can happen based on different things and this is why i come in and that's why you have people like myself who are trained to try and establish what's causing your bleed. So if you're on contraception, sometimes you can find that you're bleeding in between your periods. Um, for some people, a small amount of people, sometimes they do bleed around, but some have a, lo a little bit of spotting around ovulation. But bleeding between your periods can also be a sign of things that are a bit more worrisome, like cancers, can be because of things like infections, can be because of other things, even things like fibroids. So we need to have a look at that. The fourth one is bleeding after sex. You should not be bleeding after sex. If you're bleeding after sex, that means something is causing you to bleed after sex. And we need to establish why are you bleeding after sex. Now a lot of people you know, think, oh, am I bleeding after sex? Could it be? Could it be cancer? Do I have cervical cancer? That's one of the things I want to exclude as your doctor. But bleeding after sex can also be related to other things like maybe the friction around the area, infection can be related to it. You may be even due to something like a polyp on the cervix or maybe the way the cervix is. We sometimes we call, um, we have things that we call cervical ectropium based on how your cervix appears and when you, um, and during sex, you find that you bleed. So straight away, do book an appointment to speak to your doctor about that. Okay. Number five, when you've gone through the menopause and then you bleed, please do not ignore this. Um, as your doctor, I will be worried about something a bit more serious going on, like a cancer in the lining of the womb or even around the cervix. But the important thing is to book an appointment. When you book an appointment, then you can be referred appropriately and examined to see is that causing it. And yes, that's something that we we'll worry about, but that doesn't mean that's what it is. It might be related to something else like a polyp or other things that can cause bleeding after the menopause. Now, the last bit, which I have sort of grouped together because there can be there's a little bit of overlap is. So let's say so we're going to so this one is let's say you've. You started your periods and you've always had regular periods and then all of a sudden your periods become irregular that's a sign to speak to your doctor about it or you you realize after watching something that oh i've always had irregular periods and you've always had irregular periods and your periods are you know you don't know when to ex when you can expect a period it, they just come randomly knocking on the door and you you're just like oh my periods oh it's here today okay then or your periods last longer than 35 days so you're not having frequent bleeds um then those are also a sign to speak to your doctor about it now these things can happen at the beginning of you know when we're first starting off um having periods when you're really young or towards the end um when you know you're reaching the menopause those things can happen but if you notice something like that then it's really important to speak to your doctor about it so we can try and establish a cause. Things that can cause your bleeding to be erratic or to have irregular periods include things like stress. Stress can really, you know, all of a sudden you find that, oh, you're not bleeding as regularly as you would because you're just really stressed. Uh, or maybe you've started a home, um, a contraception that's causing you to bleed, you know, have irregular periods. Or it could be something related to, you know, exercise, excess exercise. You're just exercising too much. Or something like polycystic ovarian syndrome then we can have a look into that and establish what's causing this pattern for you and another thing which is on a similar line is your bleeding has just suddenly stopped and you're just like where's my period now the first thing to do is to see and check if you're pregnant now if you're not pregnant then like oh why has your bleeding suddenly stopped and it could be similar to what i said before stress it could be home hormone imbalance it could be thyroid problems but all of those things they're not for you to you know they're not for you to try and figure out that's my job to figure out what caused it so the whole purpose of this video is to empower you to be able to pick up some of the signs that mean you need to talk to your doctor about and my job would be to try and establish 
what's causing those things. As you can see from the video, there's so many things and there's so much overlap amongst all these things and it's like what is causing it but i am trained specifically to look at somebody as an individual based on their history based on their medical history their past history based on the medication that they're taking taking into consideration so many different things to establish why is it that you're presenting to me with this symptom which is why i say these videos are for educational purposes only because one person's bleeding in between your period can be related to one thing and the next door neighbor's bleeding in between your period can be related to something else. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope that you learned a thing or two. It is not to scare you, it is to say, oh, I think I, if I have that, I need to book an appointment straight away to see my doctor. Thank you so much and see you next time. And you have, if you haven't joined the club, don't forget to subscribe.